Biography of Apolinario Mabini, Philippines' First Prime Minister Apolinario Mabini July 23, 1864 to May 13, 1903, was the first Prime Minister of the Philippines. Known for his powerful intellect, political savvy, and eloquence, Mabini was called the brains and conscience of the revolution. Before his untimely death in 1903, Mabini's work and thoughts on the government shaped the Philippines' fight for independence over the next century. Fast Facts Apolinario Mabini known for First Prime Minister of Philippines, the brains of the revolution also known as Apolinario Mabini Y. Marinan born July 23, 1864 in Talaga, to Norman, Batangas parents. Inocencio Mabini and Dionisia Marinan died May 13, 1903 Education Colegio de San Juan de Letran, University of Santo Tomas published works, El Simil de Alejandro, Programa Constitucional de la Republica Filipina, La Revolución Filipino Awards and Honors, Mabini's face has been on the Philippine 10 peso coin handbill, Museo Neapolinario Mabini, the god Mabini is awarded to Filipinos for outstanding foreign service notable quote, man, whether or not he wishes, will work and strive for those rights with which nature has endowed him because these rights are the only ones which can satisfy the demands of his own being. Early life Apolinario Mabini Y. Marinan was born the second of eight children around 43 miles south of Manila on July 23, 1864. His parents were very poor. His father Inocencio Mabini was a peasant farmer and his mother Dionisia Marinan supplemented their farm income as a vendor at the local market. As a child, Apolinario was remarkably intelligent and studious. Despite his family's poverty, he studied at a school in Tanoan under the tutelage of Simplicio Avellino, working as a houseboy and tailor's assistant to earn his room and board. He then transferred to a school run by the famed educator Fray Valerio Malabanan. In 1881, at the age of 17, Marbini won a partial scholarship to Manila's Colegio de San Juan de Letran. Once again he worked throughout his schooling, this time by teaching younger students Latin. Continued education Apolinario earned his bachelor's degree and official recognition as a professor of Latin in 1887. He went on to study law at the University of Santo Tomas. From there, Mabini entered the legal profession in order to defend poor people. He had himself faced discrimination in school from fellow students and professors, who picked on him for his shabby clothing before they realized how brilliant he was. It took Mabini six years to complete his law degree since he worked long hours as a law clerk and a court transcriptionist in addition to his studies. He ultimately earned his law degree in 1894 at the age of 30. Political activities while at school, Mabini supported the reform movement. This conservative group was mainly made up of middle and upper class Filipinos calling for changes to Spanish colonial rule rather than outright Philippine independence. Intellectual, author, and physician Jose Rizal was also active in this movement. Political activities while at school, Mabini supported the reform movement. This conservative group was mainly made up of middle and upper class Filipinos calling for changes to Spanish colonial rule, rather than outright Philippine independence. Intellectual, author, and physician Jose Rizal was also active in this movement. In September, 1894, Mabini helped establish the reform square po de compromis areas, the body of compromisers, which sought to negotiate better treatment from Spanish officials pro-independence activists, mostly from the lower classes, joined the more radical Catapunan movement instead. Established by Andres Bonifacio, the Catapunan movement advocated armed revolution against Spain. Legal work and illness in 1895, Mabini was admitted to the lawyer's bar and worked as a newly minted lawyer in the Adriano Law offices in Manila while he also served as the secretary of the Cuerpo de Compromisarios. However, early in 1896, Apolinario Mabini contracted polio, which left his legs paralyzed. Ironically, this disability saved his life that autumn. The colonial police arrested Mabini in October of 1896 for his work with the reform movement. He was still under house arrest at the San Juan de Dios Hospital on December 30th of that year, when the colonial government summarily executed Jose Rizal, and it's believed that Mabini's polio likely kept him from the same fate. The Spanish-American war between his medical condition and his imprisonment. Apolinario Mabini was not able to participate in the opening days of the Philippine Revolution. Nevertheless, his experiences and the execution of Rizal radicalized Mabini and he turned his keen intellect to the issues of revolution and independence. In April, 1898, he penned a manifesto on the Spanish-American War, presciently warning other Philippine revolutionary leaders that Spain would likely cede the Philippines to the United States if it lost the war. 
he urged them to continue to fight for independence. This paper brought him to the attention of General Emilio Aguinaldo, who had ordered the execution of Andres Bonifacio the previous year and had been driven into exile in Hong Kong by the Spanish. The Philippine Revolution The Americans hoped to use Aguinaldo against the Spanish in the Philippines, so they brought him back from his exile on May 19, 1898. Once ashore, Aguinaldo ordered his men to bring the author of the war manifesto to him, and they had to carry the disabled Mabini over the mountains on a stretcher to Cavite. Mabini reached Aguinaldo's camp on June 12, 1898, and soon became one of the general's primary advisors. That same day, Aguinaldo declared the Philippines' independence, with himself as the dictator. Establishing the new government on July 23, 1898, Mabini was able to talk Aguinaldo out of ruling the Philippines as an autocrat. He convinced the new president to establish a revolutionary government with an assembly rather than a dictatorship. In fact, Apollinario Mabini's power of persuasion over Aguinaldo was so strong that his detractors called him the dark chamber of the president while his admirers named him the sublime paralytic. Because his personal life and morality were difficult to attack, Mabini's enemies and the new government resorted to a whispering campaign to slander him. Jealous of his immense power, they started a rumor that his paralysis was due to syphilis, rather than polio, despite the fact that syphilis does not cause paraplegia. Creating institutional foundations even as these rumors spread, Mabini continued to work toward fashioning a better country. He wrote most of Aguinaldo's presidential decrees. He also molded policy on the organization of the provinces, the judicial system, and the police, as well as property registration and military regulations. Aguinaldo appointed him to the cabinet as Secretary of Foreign Affairs and President of the Council of Secretaries. In these roles, Mabini exercised significant influence over the drafting of the first constitution for the Philippine Republic. Trying to avert war, Mabini continued moving up the ranks in the new government with his appointment as both the Prime Minister and Foreign Minister on January 2, 1899, right when the Philippines was on the brink of yet another war. On March 6 of that year, Mabini began negotiations with the United States over the Philippines' fate. Now that the U.S. had defeated Spain, both the U.S. and the Philippines were already engaged in hostilities, but not in a declared war. Mabini sought to negotiate autonomy for the Philippines and a ceasefire from foreign troops. But the U.S. refused the armistice. In frustration, Mabini threw his support behind the war effort and on May 7 he resigned from Aguinaldo's government. With Aguinaldo declaring war less than a month later on June 2, at war again as the declared war began, the revolutionary government at Cavite had to flee. Once again Mabini was carried in a hammock, this time to the north, 119 miles to Nueva Ecija. On December 10, 1899, he was captured there by Americans and made a prisoner of war in Manila until the following September. Upon his release on January 5, 1901, Mabini published a scathing newspaper article titled El Simil de Alejandro or the Resemblance of Alejandro which stated, Man, whether or not he wishes, will work and strive for those rights with which nature has endowed him, because these rights are the only ones which can satisfy the demands of his own being. To tell a man to be quiet when a necessity not fulfilled is shaking all the fibers of his being is tantamount to asking a hungry man to be filled while taking the food which he needs, the Americans immediately reeked arrested him and sent him into exile in Guam when he refused to swear fealty to the United States. During his long exile, Apollinario Mabini wrote La Revolucion Filipina Memoir. Worn down and sickly and fearing that he would die in exile, Mabini finally agreed to take the oath of allegiance to the United States. Death on February 26, 1903, Mabini returned to the Philippines where American officials offered him a plush government position as a reward for agreeing to take the fealty oath, but Mabini refused releasing the following statement. After two long years I am returning, so to speak, completely disoriented and, what is worse, almost overcome by disease and sufferings. Nevertheless, I hope, after some time of rest and study, still to be of some use, unless I have returned to the islands for the sole purpose of dying. Sadly, his words were prophetic. Mabini continued to speak and write in support of Philippine independence over the next several months. He fell ill with cholera, which was rampant in the country after years of war, and died on May 13, 1903, at only 38 years old. Legacy like fellow Philippine revolutionaries Jose Rizal and Andres Bonifacio, Mabini did not live to see his 40th birthday. Yet in his short career, he had an outsized role in shaping the revolutionary government and the future of the Philippines. The Museo Neapolinario Mabini in Tanon, Philippines exhibits the life and deeds of Mabini. Mabini's face has been on the Philippine 10 peso coin and bill.
The god Mabini is an honor given to Filipinos for distinguished foreign service. Sources Apollinario Mabini, by Leon Maguerero Presidential Museum and Library. Joaquin, Nick, Mabini the Mystery Presidential Museum and Library. Yoder, Dr. Robert L. Mabini, Wounded Hero. Born on July 23, 1864, Mabini was the second of eight children raised by poor parents in Ochencio Mabini, an illiterate farmer, and Dionysia Marinan, a market vendor. His mother wanted him to be a priest, but poverty forced Mabini to take a different path. According to a letter written by Mabini while he was in exile in Guam, his grandfather took care of my elementary instruction when I was of school age. After that, he was sent by his parents to an old clergyman in town named Di Valerio Malabanan. Mabini spent the first three years of high school under Malabanan's tutelage. Coincidentally, a comprehensive education reform occurred in the country before Mabini started a secondary education. And by the time he met Malabanan, whom he considered the grandfather of the Batangano intellectuality, the school of Tanon was already one of the best centers of secondary education in the country. In other words, young Mabini was lucky enough to be at the right place and at the right time to receive a quality education far from the reach of other Filipino children. After the first three years in the province, Mabini moved to Manila to start the fourth year of secondary education at the Colegio de San Juan de Letran. The following year, 1882, he went back to his town because his poor parents were not able to defray my further instruction. During the same period, Mabini's mother died a tragic event that would haunt him for many years. Determined to finish what he started, Mabini went back to Manila after two years to complete his secondary studies in UST. Unfortunately, he was not able to receive the Bachelor on Artes degree not because of poor grades, but of his inability to pay the required examination fee of 29 pesos. Although he could not afford the graduation expenses, Mabini still took the preparatory course of the law curriculum comprised of history of philosophy, theodicy, cosmology, and physics. In 1888, Mabini returned to UST to study the science of law for six years. He finally earned his law degree in March, 18. 94, Mabini was a humble man gifted with a superior memory, which helped him a lot in his quest to earn a law degree. His superior intelligence started to manifest during his first three years in the school of Tanon where he excelled in almost all subjects. In fact, Diego Gloria, his academic rival at that time, admitted that Apollinario never complained about the length of the lessons assigned by F.R. Malabanan. Instead, he studied them conscientiously and could recite them by heart to the last word. Mabini also studied several textbooks from cover to cover including Geographia of F.R. Martinez Vigil and Geographia Illustrata by Palozzi. Fast forward to his student days at UST where he took civil law, his professors and classmates were equally impressed F.R. Raimundo Velasquez, O.P., Professor of Natural Law, was so overwhelmed after reading Mabini's examination papers that he told one of his students, You know, this work seems to have come from the mind of a sage. I would like to live long enough to see how minds like this will lead society. Apollinario Mabini was born to dirt per parents, but he never let poverty become a hindrance in making his own success story. It is said that the young Mabini used to walk to town approximately six kilometers from his native barrio just to study. Old folks of Tanon remembered him as a quiet boy who never had any books to study with, but who was nevertheless the exemplary student. He once asked his mother to buy him a new uniform for Christmas. But after learning that her mother sold the year's coffee harvest so he could choose the best uniform, he refused to take the money. Even his graduation from law studies became a bit of a challenge, he almost didn't make it to the ceremony for lack of gown. Fortunately, a rich lady from Santa Cruz, whom he once offered legal assistance to, volunteered to be her sponsor. Not everyone remembers the pre-polio Mabini a man who could walk, stand and normal enough to learn how to dance. In an interview with the pre-war newspaper, one of his brothers revealed that Mabini once had the interest to learn basic dancing skills. To learn how to dance, Mabini sought the help of Agapito Pitan Villanueva, a dance instructor from Ilocos Norte. The guitar music, on the other hand, was provided by a mathematician from copies named Rafael Lozada. Because he was too shy to find a female partner, Mabini practiced his dance steps with a chair. To pay his school fees, Apollinario Mabini had to work as an instructor several times and even opened his own school. After completing his fourth year of secondary education at Colegio de San Juan de Letran, Mabini returned to his province where he worked as an auxiliary teacher or instructor for a school at Bawan owned by F.R. Malabanan. He used the money he earned from this job to continue his studies in Manila. He did the same job after his fifth year but this time, he worked at a school in Lipe owned by Sebastian Viri. 
The latter had only good things to say about Mabini. He was so faithful to me that when I was absent from home he doubled his work, so that his departure caused me no little distress. The most notable thing he did, while under my charge, was a welcome speech in honor of F.R. Manuel Diaz, when he came to visit this town, the delivery of which lasted more than 30 minutes. The speech was said by memory though it had been prepared in less than half an hour. In 1893, Mabini decided to open a school which only lasted for two years. According to D. Manuel Ariano, inspector of schools, Mabini's venture was ranked among the best of that period, which were those of Alindora, Villamar Ignacio, and Mendiola, described by his students as a very reserved man. Mabini would often discipline his students by pinching or hitting them gently with a piece of bamboo reed. Apollinario Mabini was never afraid to voice out his opinions. For instance, as Aguinaldo's unofficial advisor, he opposed the idea of declaring Philippine independence, according to historian Teodoro Agoncillo. Mabini rejected the idea on the basis that it was more important to reorganize the government in such a manner as to convince the foreign powers of the competence and stability of the new government than to proclaim Philippine independence at such an early period. In his book, A Short History of the Philippine Revolution, Mabini also condemned Bonifacio's assassination. He described the incident as the first triumph of personal ambition upon true patriotism and concluded that the revolution failed because it was badly directed, because its director gained his place not by meritorious, but by irresponsible actions, because instead of sustaining the most useful men for the country, he rendered them useless by jealousy. Aguinaldo's decision to make Mabini his trusted advisor flared up the latter's enemies. He was called many names such as the Dark Chamber of the President and was even rumored to have contracted syphilis which allegedly caused his paralysis, but the gossip was truly unfounded, and author F. Sainal Jose said that this is an old tactic of Filipinos inflamed by jealousy, envy or simple cussedness. The truth is that Mabini contracted polio in 1896 that led to the paralysis of his lower limbs.